Important real estate vocabulary words. Today we're doing numbers 93 through 100 of 300. So let's get started. Hi everyone, my name is Paul Vicheski and welcome to the Real Estate Classroom YouTube channel where our mission is simple to help you pass your real estate exam the first time. Vocabulary words will go a long way to getting you there. So let's get... Now, as you can see on your screen, the words we're gonna discuss today all evolve around condominiums and cooperatives. Condominiums and cooperatives. All right, number 93, Horizontal Property Act. Sometimes referred to as Horizontal Property Acts with an S, plural on the end, because all 50 states have their form of this particular law. But what it does is it allows an owner, an individual owner, to purchase an individual unit within a condominium regime and they have fee simple title in their individual unit and then that it allows for undivided ownership in the common areas of the rest of the condominium regime. And most of you I think are familiar with what a condo is. Uh, a condo regime is just a, you know, almost looks like an apartment community. You have individual units and each one of those little individual units is owned fee simple title uh, by the individual owner, but they also have an undivided interest in the rest of the unit it's, or the rest of the regime itself, like the, the common areas, swimming pool areas, those type of things. Number 94 condominium regime now condominium the term condominium refers to an individual ownership in a single unit in a multi-unit structure with an undivided interest within the common areas again i i kind of explained that in number 93 but the term regime refers to the governing system of that complex or that that uh, multi-unit structure so a condominium regime is the, the individual units and the common areas, and then the regime refers to how that regime is run, how it's run, all right, or how it's governed. And we're, we'll explain that here in a minute. Number 95, master deed. So a master deed is filed by a developer that's developing, a, let's say, a condominium regime. And along with that, that master deed that is filed, is also what's called a condominium condominium declaration. Now, the master deed does a couple of things along with the condominium declaration. It, number one, establishes the ability for single deeds. Remember, the individual units are owned fee simple by an individual. Therefore, there has to be an individual deed. So when this is filed, it establishes a mechanism for single deed, excuse me, single deed estates. Number two, it provides legal descriptions of each of those individual units along with the condominium regime as a whole. Number three, it establishes an undivided interest to the common areas. Because remember, as we talked about, you have fee simple ownership in that individual unit, but you have an undivided ownership of the common areas. And number four, it establishes laws should actually say bylaws, which gives the homeowners association its authority. And we're going to talk about a homeowners association in a minute. Number 96, let's talk about a homeowners association. I think most of us are familiar with a homeowners association. Now remember, a homeowners, a homeowners association or what's called an HOA has its powers from the master deed and the declaration that was recorded by the developer. The homeowners association is typically made up of owners within that community. And then the HOA establishes guidelines and rules such as covenants, etc. And then they are the enforcement mechanism to ensure that those rules are followed. And if they're not, then there's sanctions that can be levied out to each one of the homeowners that's in violation. So it's a private organization that governs, governs the common interest in communities such as uh, townhouses or condominiums, etc. It establishes certain homeowners association rules and enforces them. And it may also be responsible for maintenance and upkeep. So it's very common in a condominium regime where the HOA will um, 
establish monthly, quarterly, or annual dues. So each individual unit owner must pay a certain amount every period for the maintenance, the insurance, the upkeep, you know, maybe it has a pool, the pool's got to be serviced, it's got lawns that need to be mowed, parking lots that need to be maintained. That is the function of a homeowners association. Number 97, a cooperative. A cooperative looks a lot aesthetically like a condominium regime, but there are substantial differences. First of all, it's ownership of an apartment unit whereby the purchaser buys shares of a, corp a corporation which allows the shareholder to occupy a specific unit. So let's say you have a, a, a structure that has 10 units. Each one of those units are apartments. They're not condominiums. So the purchaser doesn't have fee simple ownership in each of those individual units. That entire structure, that entire community is a corporation. So if unit two, if the, uh, the shareholder that lives in unit two wants to sell their shares and move, and I come along, I'm gonna buy that person's shares which gives me the right to occupy unit number two. Remember, there's no fee simple ownership. You own shares in a corporation, a lot like owning shares of a, a Wells Fargo bank. I mean, that's really what it is. Now, if I buy unit number two's shares, I now become a shareholder in that corporation. It allows me to live in unit number two. So therefore, I'm going to assign, assign, look at number 98, a proprietary lease. Now that proprietary lease is a regular lease agreement that establishes the rules of conduct just like a regular lease agreement would do, but um, it allows for if I don't follow the rules or, or I breach the terms of that lease, then the, the other shareholders or the HOA, maybe there's an HOA that's been established, uh, they can levy punitive measures against me. So a cooperative, the biggest difference between a cooperative and cooperative ownership and uh, uh, condominium ownership is in a condominium, you have fee simple ownership. And in the cooperative, you have ownership of shares to a corporation. Number 99, a timeshare. I think we probably all know what a timeshare is too, but it's an interval ownership and is deeded and the and the owner, the purchaser, is deeded an undivided interest in a specific property that holds title as tenants in common with other owners. So we have a single family house on the beach. I own it. I decide to sell it as a timeshare. So I divide it into 52 weeks. So then I sell one week intervals to 50 different people. And I'll tell you why 50 in a minute, not 52. Now, why did I say 50 instead of 52? Well, there's a couple of reasons or scenarios. Number one is I may still want to maintain uh, a week of ownership. So if I maintain a week of ownership, then I'm going to sell 49 other weeks to 49 other owners and then reserve two weeks for maintenance. If I don't want to maintain any ownership interest and I'm just going to totally sell out, then I'm going to sell my uh, interest to 50 other people representing 50 weeks, and then I'm going to reserve two weeks for maintenance. So in this case, for two solid weeks out of a year, no one can live there. It's just reserved for painting and, and th those type of things. That's a timeshare. Remember, in a timeshare, it's fee simple ownership with all the other interval owners, and we all have tenants in common between us. And then number 100 is vacation license. Hey, instead of me um, uh, purchasing a timeshare where I have fee simple ownership, but I still want a week in that particular house on the beach, I'm going to buy a vacation license. It's a form of timesharing that offers the purchase the purchaser the right to use the unit for a specified period of time, but there's no fee simple ownership. If you're going to continue studying, check out this video right here. If you have not subscribed, click the little circle to my left, comments, questions down below. See you all in the next video.